folks, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Natasha and I do book things here. Today's video is going to be my 18 2018 releases that I'm excited for. There's a ton. There's an absolute ton, but this video would be a bajillion hours long if I talked about the like 52 that I currently have on my list. Starting in 2018 monthly, I'm going to be discussing the books that I'm excited for that are being released in that month. Um, so I picked a couple from each month, but I didn't want to give you all like six from January that I'm excited for or, you know, each month because I am going to be discussing them a little bit further as the year progresses. I really do pick covers that are aesthetically pleasing to me, especially with new releases, but also Compiling this list, I realized that a lot of the books that I'm excited for um, are different, like, more diverse characters, which is great. There's a lot of, like, really exciting, um, more diverse reads coming out this year, so that's good. I am going to be looking at my Goodreads because I don't have the synopsises for synopsi for all of these books just floating in my head, so I not really what all of the plots are about. So forgive me with that. On January 2nd, we have Meet Cute. This is a little like short story collection anthology about um, how people first met of the sort of like Meet Cute stories. Jeff and I always tell ours to people. So I think this is just gonna be like a light cutesy read. I absolutely love the cover. It is like so cute. And I want like the little artwork style to just be like, I, I just love it. I just think it's like adorable. So next in January, it's January 16th. There is a love, hate and other filters. This is a book um, that's being described as a good book for people who love Angie Thomas's The Hate You Give, which I'm like, <laughs> sign me up. This is an own voices coming of age novel that focuses heavily on Islamophobia and um, how the main character is dealing with that. There's some other things in there, like she goes to film school and stuff like that. So I think like a lot of the other interests in the book are gonna intrigue me as well as how she deals with that subject matter. The second I heard that it was being recommended for people who like The Hate You Give, I was like, <laughs> check. <laughs> Next we have January 31st. This is definitely going to be a book that I purchased in January. I've been excited for this one for a long, long time. I have the Disturbed Girls Dictionary. That's hard for me to say. Um, but this one is just one the cover is gorgeous, but and I actually went and like figured out what it's about. I was like, ooh, yes. This follows the teenage girl Macy who is described as disturbed by her school and she's got like a whole list of problems. It's described as her mom can't move off the couch, her dad's in prison, her brother's been kidnapped by CPS, and she just decides to start writing in dictionary format. Um, so I feel like this is going to be dark, family drama, you know, an interesting format. The cover is beautiful. Um, at some point there's a mention of her having a machete, so who knows what the hell is gonna go on with that. I'm definitely very intrigued and I just think this is gonna be 100% totally up my alley, so that's one that I'm very, very excited about. Next being released February 6th, we have Down and Across. I heard about this from Adam Silvera's Instagram and I went and I checked it out and it looks really cool. It follows, I believe, an Armenian teenager, Armenian-American teenager, and he's basically known for like quitting things and he has a lot of like pressure about applying for schools and things like that. Um, and then he goes on this sort of like, I believe, kind of like a road trip with his friend or he pieces out <laughs> with that. Um, he's going in like a high-speed chase and they go like on like a whole whack of adventures like sneaking into bars, going to a zoo, um, and then crosswords come into play with that which I think is just really fun. It sounds like a good mix of like diverse characters, teenage pressure, and then also like a little bit of like road trip adventure stuff which you guys know I love road trip books so I thought like yes give me a road trip book from like you know perspective of an Armenian American teenager. I'm in, sounds good. And then Adam Silvera's like, yes, read this book. So that is one that um, I'm also pretty stoked about. So then on February 27th, so like right around my birthday, <laughs> we have um, A Girl Like That being released. Now this has so many different things going on and the synopsis that like, if you're at all interested in the cover like I was, go on Goodreads and read it because I'm not going to do the synopsis justice. I'm going to take a look at this. The story of a 16 year old Saudi Arabian girl and she's known as like a troublemaker. She's an orphan, risk taker, that sort of thing. Um, she's the subject of gossip at school. So then something happens to her and they're left to sort of piece together that she's a little bit more than just a girl like that, uh, which I really like that sort of aspect of it. It's told from multiple perspectives 
perspectives, which I like in books, some people don't, but I really find that's fun when you get to see different people's perspectives on one character. But the last line of this on Goodreads I really like, so it says it tackles complicated issues of race, identity, class, and religion and paints a portrait of teenage ambition, angst, and alienation that feels both inventive and universal. So that just sounds great. On March 13th, we have the third book in the Illumine Gemina series. I don't know what its actual series is called. Um, we have Obsidio coming out. This is book three, which picks up where book one and two left off. I don't really want to give you guys ideas of what this is about because if you haven't read the first and second one, you'll kind of be like, what? Um, but yeah, I loved Illumine, I don't have my own copy of Gemini, but um, I rated both of those books five stars. They are just amazing like sci-fi space teenage adventure novels and they're told in such a fun format that um, I immediately have to go like get Obsidio the second it comes out. Uh, the cover is also beautiful. On March 20th we have Tyler Johnson was here. Uh, this book is stunning. It's absolutely gorgeous. This follows the story of a boy and his twin brother and they end up at a party and fortunately there was a shooting and his brother goes missing which they come to realize uh, through a video being released was police brutality and his brother sort of deals with his mom in the aftermath of that. Um, this sounds intense. Very much like The Hate You Give, which was one of my top rated novels of 2017. Um, the second that I heard that this book was being released, I like immediately wanted to read it and I will definitely go out and pick that up the second it's released just because I feel like more stories like that need to be told. Definitely on my list. Then moving on to April. On April 5th we have Stranger. Now this book I noticed because of the cover and I was like Okay, what is this about? And then I read this and I'm just gonna read you guys the Goodreads because it sounds amazing. So it says, Astor, Ontario, 1904. A boy staggers out of the forest covered in blood and collapses at the feet of 16-year-old Emmy. While others are suspicious and afraid, Emmy is drawn to him. And he, is he really the monster the town folks say he is? So then Astor, Ontario, 1994, like 90 years later. It says, Megan arrives from London for her great-grandmother Emmy's 105th birthday. Uh, it should be a happy family occasion, but Megan is nursing a broken heart and carrying a secret she feels fears might consume her. Spanning the 20th century explores themes of belonging, forgiveness. Stranger is an epic, unforgettable love story to cherish. This, so this sounds like so interesting, like what's going on with this boy and then like, you know, discovering more about her grandmother's past. You guys know I love books told from like the perspective of older people and especially that understanding of like granddaughter, grandmother sort of relationship love it so like I'm throw that in with sort of like this like mystery element I just think this is going to be really good um because I'm definitely interested based on that alone I think that sounds really cool so as you guys can see so far a lot of these books have been a, like like a little bit more serious note this one's pretty light and I don't expect it to be like the greatest book but like I really want to read it coming out on April 10th and it's called Lizzie uh this is a Lizzie Borden retelling for those of you who don't know anything about Lizzie Borden it was a case back in I think like what 18 1990 where um, you know you hear the whole story like Lizzie Borden grabbed an axe gave her father 40 wax when she was done something something she gave her mother 41 it's basically suspected that she like you know hacked her parents to death um, but there's a lot of like sort of interesting things about the case I know like everything about the case and it's rumored that she was having a lesbian affair with um, the maid so this basically follows Lizzie Borden and the maid and sort of talks probably about their relationship and you know she's getting irritable and is having blackouts and like it's obviously gonna lead to this murder I just like learning about the Lizzie Borden case so like even though I know what's gonna happen and I know the ins and outs of the case I'm still gonna read this book because I think it's gonna be fun so on April 24th we have Leah on the off Beat by Becky Abertali. This follows a side character in Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda, which I did read and I did enjoy. Um, it wasn't a five star book for me, but I did like it quite a bit. Um, but this follows Leah, who is bisexual and is dealing with that. This is just like the most awesome cover, and I loved Becky Abertali's work so far, so this is probably one of those like insta buy, like I'm gonna buy it regardless of what it was about. Other than that, I don't know much about the book, I don't care to, but I know that she is dealing with um, her bisexual and how that plays into her life and with like her parents and stuff. So up next on May 8th we have Undead Girl Gang. This one sounds like so much fun. The cover is gorgeous but I started reading it and was like this is just absolutely hilarious. So basically it's just like small town group of teenage girls. They play around with like amateur witchcraft and then they die. So then one of their 
their friend decides to like bring them back to life so they now have this like undead girl gang and they're trying to figure out um and cover the truth as to like what happened to them it sounds perfect and hilarious and I need it and that cover though oh yes so nice um but that just sounds fun like zombie teenage girls amateur witchcraft a mystery Yes, yes please. Sign me up. I need it now. And on May 15th we have my so-called Bollywood life. Um, this just looks beautiful and it follows like a sort of like love story all about this girl who's like trying to get into Bollywood, going to film school and she thinks she has her whole love life figured out and it was like sort of predicted about what her love life would be. Comes back from film school and like the, her whole love life is in shambles and she figures out like who else, who she's supposed to be with, how she's supposed to continue her journey to like be becoming a Bollywood film star. So this just sounds really fun and I love that kind of culture so i will definitely be picking this up. Um, but yeah, also stunning, beautiful cover. And on May 29th we have a book that I haven't heard too many people talk about and that is They Come in All Colors. So this is I think like a YA historical fiction novel um, that takes place in the 1960s, early 70s. It follows a 13 year old um, biracial boy who has moved to a new school in New York City and he's dealing with a lot of race and then because he's dealing with that at his new school he's having I think flashbacks to why they had to move to New York in the first place um, so I think this just deals heavily with racism in like the 1960s 1970s which I'm really interested in learning more about and on June 5th we have a book by Marisa Pestle which wrote Night Film which I'm currently reading and loving and so the second that I knew that she had like another book coming out in 2018 I just like went and added it to the list it sounds really intriguing and like I Again, this is a book that's very hard to describe based off of the synopsis on Goodreads. This is actually, I believe, like a YA mystery thriller. Um, very different from her adult work, but sounds really interesting. Um, this is follows a girl who comes back, I believe, to her small town, and all of her friends are very different. She's trying to figure out what happened to her one friend, and then all of a sudden this guy just like appears at their door in a thunderstorm. So I'm gonna read you this. It says, a thunderstorm rages and a mysterious man knocks on the door. He looks like an exhausted ringmaster of a cheap traveling circus. Sign me the fuck up. He announces the impossible and so begins the never world awake, the nightmare, the nothingness. What? What is that about? Who knows? And I mean, given her writing in night film, you really never know like what's gonna happen in one of her books. So um, very, very intrigued, sounds cool. Then on July 3rd, we have The Loneliest Girl in the Universe. This cover, gorgeous. Oh, so like, again, it was like, ooh, pretty cover. Let me check out what this is about. This is a sci-fi book about a girl who is in space, in her spaceship, and her parents both die, so she's kind of up there alone. NASA's like, yo, we're gonna send somebody up there because you're just like chilling out here alone. And so this person comes to her and then she realizes that like maybe she might have been better off alone. Ooh, spoopy, mystery thriller. So this sounds really good. Sci-fi, I love the sort of like possible psychological element of being alone in space. Love that. Sign me up, Major Tom. Like, yeah, I'm in. Then on July 24th, we have a book that I am just like, the second I saw the cover, I didn't even care what it was about. Like some of these, but like this one especially. Um, this one is Scream All Night. This is just like perfect horror movie vibes. Love it. So I just have to read this because this sounds just so up my alley. So it says, Dario Hayward knows one thing. He's never going back to Moldova Studios, the iconic castle that served as the set studio and home to the cast and crew of dozen, dozen of cult classic B-horror movies. It's been three years since Dario's even seen the place after getting legally emancipated from his father, the infamous director of Moldova's Creature, creature Features. Wow, that's hard to say. Then Dario's brother invites him home to a mysterious ceremony involving his father in a tribute to his first film, The Curse of the Mummy's Tongue. Dario swears his homecoming will be a one-time visit. A way for him to get closure on his past and reunite with Haley, his first love and co-star of Zombie Children of the Harvest Sun. <laughs> <laughs> a production <laughs> fraught with real life tragedy and say goodbye for good, but the unthinkable happens. Dario gets sucked back into the twisted world of Moldavia and the horrors both real and imagined he's left there. With only months to rescue the sinking studio and everyone who has built their lives there, Dario must confront demons of his past and the uncertainties of his future. But can he escape the place that haunted him his whole life? So this just sounds fun. This sounds like B-movie with like teenage angst mixed with like parental drama mixed with B-movies, like, 
it sounds great. This sounds like Natasha's book that just needs to happen immediately, so. Then on July 17th, we have When Life Gives You Demons, and this cover, again, <laughs> is just like, yes, what is this? I'm gonna just tell you guys this one as well. It says, 16-year-old Shelby Black has spent the past year training to be an exorcist. Her great uncle Roy, a Catholic priest and Shelby's guardian, believes that she has a gift for expelling demons, and he's put her through ex exorcist boot camp hell. But he still doesn't trust her to do an exorcism on her own. High school is hard enough without having to explain that you fight demons for a living, so Shelby keeps her extracurricular activities quiet, especially from Spencer, her cute math tutor. Secrets run in Shelby's family, though. Her mother has been missing ever since an exorcism went horribly wrong, and Uncle Roy is tight-lipped about it. But Shelby's hell-bent on finding her mom, no matter what, even if that ends up costing her her soul and a date with Spencer. That sounds great. <laughs> So the last book being released August 28th is Toil and Trouble. This is 16 Tales of Witchcraft and Women by various authors that all sound familiar to me in some sort of way. But uh, yeah, it's just 16 short tales about women and witchcraft and I'm like, yep, sign me up. It's coming out like right before fall. I read it in like a Halloween kind of season, get myself pumped because I'm going to be home for Halloween in 2018 and your girl is pumped and I'm planning on having a big ass Halloween party and I'm just like super excited for fall this year and like I'm just gonna go hard instant buy quite frankly for August. So yeah those are the 18 books that I am excited for in 2018. Not easy to talk about 18 things quickly so definitely be sure to stay tuned in 2018 for my monthly videos where I talk about monthly releases that I'm excited for. If you guys weren't familiar my goal is to only buy three new releases a month. Some of these months have like 10, 12, 15 books that I'm excited for, so pray for me because uh, it's not going to be easy to narrow them down to like a top three that I want to buy. Links to all of them down below if you want to go check them out. Like I said, this video is going to be a bitch to edit and it's already like probably 31 minutes long, so I am going to let you guys go. Know in the comments down below which books you're excited for, if any of those are new to you, also let me know. And uh, yeah, until the next video, I will talk to all of you soon. Bye!